Hey guys, how's it going? So this is going to be a quick tour of Zubuntu 20.04. So as you know, it just got recently released and this is the latest version. Um, so I'm just going to quickly take a tour around the desktop and see what uh, applications it ships with and uh, just talk about the desktop, see if uh, this is something that if you haven't used XFC, just uh, go over and see if it's something you would be interested in using. <clears throat> So one thing I just want to quickly look at, uh, this is using the 5.4 kernel, so things are up to date. And in case you haven't used XFC, well, this is a very, very customizable um, desktop environment. It gives you a lot of options. And if you right click on the desktop, as you can see, you have a bunch of options here and you have a mini application menu, which is also found at the top left corner here. And if you um, click on an application and decide to use something, then you have a task manager here and you have your system tray here <clears throat> with the clock as well on the top right. So for the file manager, uh, let's see what it's using. It's using the Thunar file manager. And also keep in mind the theme that you're looking at here does come by default in the uh, installation. It's just not the exact uh, default um, settings as well as the um, desktop background, which is, uh, again, if you're not familiar with XFC, it's very easy to change. You just right click on desktop, desktop settings, and then you can choose the folder you want to use if you've uh, downloaded something if you want to use a an image from of your own but here it has a large selection that I'll kind of showcase here uh, of various abstract and nature type wallpapers which are uh, definitely very nice looking and then there's one of a cute cat here so let's uh, put it back to the one that I was using Okay, so for the default applications, um, XFC, this, uh, the XFC flavor of Ubuntu definitely ships with a lot of applications, but I think that they're all useful. So when it comes to the accessories, we have a file searcher, we have a file manager, calculator, uh, and there, this is pretty nice because it doesn't just come with uh, your regular text editor, but it has something that reminds me of KDE widgets. You have a note application here that uh, automatically starts up in the task tray so you can uh, really quickly uh, access it and remove it whenever you want to. <clears throat> and it has in uh, it has a screenshot tool, the terminal, and everything that you would basically need. It even has a couple of games. Now not everybody really cares for this and, and that's why I think that as a whole uh, people who are minimalists and uh, don't want their um, desktop to be bloated, as some would say. <clears throat> and then this might not be the distribution for you, but I'm sure there's a minimal ISO as well. Um, for the graphics uh, department, there's GIMP, which some distributions don't ship with by default. I think this is very useful. Uh, I think it's a very nice um, program. And another thing is, um, as we know, XFC is a very lightweight desktop environment. Sure, it doesn't look as modern uh, in Flash as other desktop environments. Um, but in case you haven't uh, known this, XFC is definitely one of the more lightweight um, desktop environments. And if we look at the task manager, keep in mind I'm using a virtual machine, so... Uh, the performance isn't as good as on hardware. Um, but we can take a look at the CPU and memory usage, although I would have preferred a different system monitor because this one does not display the RAM usage, which I'm very curious. I believe it should be hovering around 300. When it comes to the internet, for our default web browser, we have Firefox, default email client, we have Thunderbird, and then we have a messenger and a torrent client as well. For multimedia, one thing that surprises me is it does not ship with VLC by default. I think it's uh, one of the best media players out there. It instead uses Parole Media Player, which I've this is the first time I've heard of it. So if you've used this before, let me know in the comments what you think of it. But uh, that's the default media player for both, I'm assuming, music and video playback. 
And then we have the office applications here for writing and uh, presentations and whatnot. Uh, this is always useful and uh, I always appreciate having this installed by default instead of having to manually install it myself. Now for the rest, um, oh, before that, we also have some useful tools such as partitioning your disk, uh, the system monitor that I just looked at, and the file manager. And when it comes to settings, in case you don't know, XFC has a ton of settings here. Um, and if we even type in the search bar settings, there's a settings editor, a settings manager, greeter settings, onboard settings. There's so many different settings. But if you do want to adjust your system, then the one you would want would be the, uh, the system would be the settings manager, which we could just drag and drop to the desktop for ease of use and um, let's just open that up so here it's it, there's definitely a lot of uh, settings um, if you're unfamiliar with this that's why I recommend before actually trying this on hardware if you've never used XFC I recommend uh, opening up a virtual machine and testing it out first getting familiar with the system Th these are just too many settings for me to look at for this video so I'll just briefly hover over some of them um, but it, it is, despite all of these settings, uh, they're very nicely categorized. And if you want to say, change the icons, then it, uh, shows you where you can find those settings. And for the user manager, it's very easy to just, um, change the picture or name and so on and so forth. And when it comes to appearance, this is how I got mine to look. So I believe the default theme was Greybird. Um, or something else. I, I, I feel like it was something else, but, uh, it doesn't matter. Um, I decided to use Numix or Numix, however you pronounce it. Um, but I'll switch it to something else to just show the various themes. And, uh, there's also, uh, various icons here that are shipped by default. Now, keep in mind, you can obviously, um, change these if you'd like and you can also install um you can install your own from online um i think i've uh, talked about that in previous videos so this is the appearance tab right here again the style changes the style of the windows the icons you can even change the fonts and then you have even more settings here Again, there's so many settings. And if you're on a, using a high DPI display, you have a scaling option, which I don't know if it's because I'm on a virtual machine or whatever, but it only gives two options here. So if we go back, we also have the desktop. And uh, if you haven't noticed, if you right click on the desktop, you can access it from here as well. Now, again, I think that despite the fact that, uh, of course, um, when it comes to XFC, it focuses on stability, it focuses on being lightweight, um, but I just think that uh, with the right settings and with the right theme and icons, it could definitely uh, look up to par with um, other um, desktops out there. And if we look at here, we have a bunch of options um, for adjusting the panel. So if we go to pa panel preferences, if uh, you want to adjust that, you have a bunch of settings here. Um, and one thing that, one thing that I think is very interesting about these settings is that it has this opacity setting. And if uh, I adjust this like that on enter, what this means is when my mouse hovers over it, it becomes 70% opaque. Uh, so I think that that is a really interesting setting. I've never seen this in any other desktop before. Um, but yeah, when it comes to customizing and not just uh, the way the system looks, but the way the system feels as well, you have a ton of options here. And uh, we also have um, settings to adjust the uh, default applications. Uh, so XFC, really, if, if you're a power user, if you want to have total control of your system, this is a really good. Um, and also, if you want to run it on older hardware uh, and whatnot, uh, it's definitely very good. This is definitely something that you should uh, check out and get into. And um, as you can see for the window manager, so in the previous settings, we were able to change the colors, but this is able to change the title bar. 
Um, and as you can see already with uh, just adjusting uh, here and there a couple of settings, we were able to uh, certainly make things look a bit more interesting. Um, when it comes to shortcuts, if you go on the desktop and hold the meta key, which should be the Windows button, uh, button with the Windows logo on your keyboard, if we do meta and E, it opens up the um, text editor. If we do um, meta R, you have an application finder, which is very nice. This is pretty cool. Uh, a meta F opens up the file manager. And let's see, meta D allows you to search. And I believe there was also one for Firefox. Um, let's see which one it was. Oh, there we go, meta W launches Firefox. So these are um, just some interesting shortcuts uh, that are on by default, which I think are worth noting. Um, and Control-Alt-T, of course, opens up the terminal, which some distributions uh, don't ship with that by default. Uh, and that's very useful, again, if you use the terminal often and if you're a power user. And speaking of shortcuts, let's type up shortcuts here. And as you can see, the system settings, despite having a ton of settings, um, the uh, organization and, and the way that you can find everything, the search feature are definitely very useful. So these are a bunch of shortcuts here. And yeah, like I said, I mean, the settings are just so many that uh, you're, you're definitely gonna want to uh, free up some time to really be able to consume all of this and to uh, familiarize yourself. Um, but what can I say? It's using Ubuntu 20.4, which is an LTS release, meaning, if you don't know, long-term support. So it's very stable. The um, system itself is stable. The applications are going to be stable. And using XFCE, I mean, it doesn't get updated all that often, but it's very stable as well as a desktop environment. Um, and on top of that, like I said, it's a very, um, a very lightweight desktop environment. Uh, unfortunately, I, I really can't uh, find how many, um, I, I can't find out how much RAM is being used, but I'm assuming it's pretty low. Um, and yeah, so this was kind of a, a quick tour of Zubuntu 20.04 showcasing uh, the default applications, what to expect. I mean, uh, you're basically going to have a very similar experience to the previous LTS release. It's just going to be uh, updated with uh, newer versions for software and whatnot. Um, so yeah, if you want stability, if you want to have power over your system, uh, then this is definitely for you. But maybe if you're a minimalist and don't like too much settings or too many applications and all that type of stuff, then this might not be uh, exactly for you. Uh, and another thing is, even though it doesn't really look modern by default, you can easily um, play around with a lot of the settings and look up uh, various themes online to make it look more modern. Even with the default ones, as you can see, it definitely makes it look better. And um, I would, if you're also a beginner, I would definitely recommend this for you because um, this would, at least for me, when I was using Linux in the beginning, getting more into it, uh, I used XFCE for a while and um, it definitely teaches you more about Linux and, and the system and whatnot uh, through all of these settings and whatnot. So. Um, yeah, definitely check it out, try it out in a virtual machine and, uh, yeah. So if you have any comments or anything, uh, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. If you liked it, make sure to like and subscribe and that's basically it. Thanks for watching.